This is Mario once again with MIA Microflight and in this video I'm going to be talking about counter rotating mechanisms that one can use uh, um, not just in uh, radio control helicopters, full scale helicopters, but also in rubber powered helicopters. Uh, the thing with rubber powered helicopters, um, I mean I've been showing uh, quite a bit of work uh, lately, uh, stuff that I have been revamping from my 90 in 1992 uh, rubber, rubber powered kits that I used to sell back in those days uh, I've been revamping a lot of stuff so that I can make you know some of the parts in 3d uh, printed form I've already shown some of that um, and um, and so I've uh, come back uh, to these uh, mechanisms because I am going to be working on a coaxial helicopter uh, with uh, 3d print parts of course and uh, some mechanisms that I'm going to be showing here discussing a little bit just to give you an idea how these things work this is more for those that um, that are not familiar with uh, mechanisms like this. It's more for uh, you know the, maybe the first uh, uh, the timer that um, uh, wants to understand a little bit uh, about how these things uh, operate. But anyway, what you're seeing here is basically a uh, 3D printed uh, design here that I did for one of my uh, larger coaxial radio control helicopters that is uh, also based on a full scale helicopter uh, of my own design. And so. That is the that is the actual model quarter scale model of uh, the coaxial helicopter. You can see the mechanism that I'm talking about. This one, in particularly, is in the uh, is done at the bottom, but that can also be done at the top, depending depending how you want to establish the control here. And this is, by the way, is a way shift, you know, to minimize any complexity. There are no mechanical links or anything like that. It's all done by weight shift. And so that is my coaxial helicopter that I uh, that it, like I said, it's also. Um, it, it's, it's a quarter scale of the full scale model of my own uh, design. And so getting back to this, that's why I have this here as a, as a form of reference. You know, one is clockwise rotating, the other one's uh, counterclockwise rotating. Of course, when you use motors, you know, one motor is driving clockwise, the other motor is driving counterclockwise, and that's how you establish the counterclockwise rotation. But in terms of doing a uh, just a simple rubber, rubber powered helicopter, you got to employ some kind of a mechanism that is going to uh, um, allow you to do that counterclockwise uh, rotation uh, uh, driven by one source which is the the link here to the rubber power you could do this with uh, two rubber bands and attach uh, you know a, a rubber band independently through a gear system you know to each one of these uh, larger uh, 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 gears uh, you know in, in of course in a smaller and lighter form you know for a rubber powered helicopter but the simplest way to do this is by using bevel gears such as the uh, diagram that I show here and that's why I did this here just to be able to explain these things uh, so that's one way as you can see the top rotor is attached via the uh, the solid uh, uh, shaft which has a hook to the rubber powered um, uh, motor and then the other shaft is more hollow that is um, that, that allows the top rotor shaft to go through that hollow shaft is also attached to that top uh, bevel gear so the hollow shaft is, at, is attached to the top uh, bevel gear that's uh, going to the uh, lower motor here or the lower rotor which uh, spins counterclockwise and then the top one spins clockwise which is attached to this one to uh, the this lower bevel gear and this gear right here is just doing the uh, the the turning of uh, top and bottom in opposing uh, directions. So that's one of the simplest and more uh, and more uh, uh, true ways to uh, to do this counter rotating. The other way I I was trying to get uh, another idea here, but I, I killed that, so that's no good there. Uh, this one is another way to do this by uh, doing it. Uh, and I, by the way, I've done all these things back in uh, you know in the early 80s when I embarked on. Um, learning how to you know the mechanics of uh, uh, r r r helicopters uh, it was, you know started with very simple uh, mechanics very simple contraptions and I went to a little more elaborate mechanics and I and I've done so many of these things over the years I mean what I've shown is, is only partial of the stuff that I've done I, I've done contraptions you know with uh, pulleys with thread um, uh, with with bobbins with uh, gears with the plates with uh, with links uh, with um, with uh, uh, with with plates like this, you know, just using uh, just using pressure pressure plates over uh, rubber wheels, and this is and this is basically what I'm showing here. I'm showing two plates here: top plate, bottom plate, and those are sandwiched kind of in a 
compressed way over these rubber wheels here and as the uh, the bottom plate spins it allows the top plate to spin in counter clack in the opposite direction via these wheels here by nature of the, the way these are uh, assembled here uh, the only thing with this is that uh, because this is just plates flat plates over rubber wheels is that if you have a torquey very torquey motor here rubber motor uh, there's a likelihood of these things are uh, slipping you know the top plate slipping you're not going to get the same uh, the same kind of rotation uh, uh, power transfer you know, uh, consistently so that's the only thing with this and this has to be done very very uh, precise and uh, uh, and you can't have any slippage one way to get around there this is to use um, to use gears crown gears and a crown gear if you look at a crown gear basically it's just a gear that has teeth sticking up from the surface here like a crown I'm kind of rough sketching here just to give you an idea of what I'm discussing here as I'm, as I'm explaining this so that's a crown gear and then you have a regular gear that sits on top of this and as this spins this rotates or, it's, or vice versa as this spins that it rotates so basically our way to do this instead of using plates and rubber wheels here is to use two regular uh, um, gears here and two crown gears one on top of the other one and so that's how you you would establish you know the same thing that I'm showing uh, with with the bevel gears over here you have a shaft right through a, a hollow shaft it's attached to the top uh, crown gear goes right through that one right there is attached to to this one right here um, let's put a, a little neck here put a set screw here and you have a hook here so as this spins, it transfers the power counterclockwise to the top, uh, to this top uh, gear here, and because this is attached to one of the rotors, the lower rotor, rotor and this is attached to the top rotor, you're going to have counterclockwise uh, rotation. So these are the, um, some of the uh, mechanics that uh, that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm showing here, and one of these I'm going to be employing uh, very soon here in, in a counterclockwise helicopter uh, that's going to be modified from. It's going to be modified from that design right there, and that I'm calling it the uh, Mosquito um, uh, MIA Mosquito uh, rubber powered helicopter because that's based on the Mosquito, the full scale Mosquito, which is just a mast with a boom landing gear, and the pilot sits in the open frame. So, this video is about uh, designing uh, rubber power helicopters of the coaxial type, and so it's going to be one of the first videos because from here. I am going to uh, build structure and uh, either use that type of gear system here or that type of gear system. I do have gears that are bevel gears, that are nylon gears that I bought, uh, uh, you know, back in, in, the, in the early 80s <laughs> from a company that's called, uh, that was called Stock Drive Products. They used to sell all kinds of gears and so I stumbled upon that, um, uh, upon that uh, um, company by looking at the Thomas Register. Back in those days, we didn't have internet. Once again, and the way you would uh, you would see what uh, what the industry, um, who was in the industry, was to look at the uh, look at these uh, almost like a phone book. You know, back in the days we we had phone books because uh, that's how you got you know your phone uh, listed uh, in in the phone book. So. There is a. Um, there used to be a. I think to this day even uh, Thomas Register is a, is a, uh, a, a book of reference where all the all the manufacturing, um, all the industry uh, companies uh, that, that do anything for the industry are are listed there under electronics, um, mechanics, uh, 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 steel industry, um, fabric industry. Everything is is uh, um, you know at least from the time that I remember using that uh, reference. Uh, almost like a, like I said, like a phone book. The Thomas Register was the place where you would go and, and, and find uh, you know source source out uh, uh, companies and find out who's 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 doing what, who sells what. And so I stumble on uh, uh, stock drive products by uh, through through that um, sort of information through that point of reference there. But 
nowadays in the internet you know you have so many options and so many things that are so easy to find but back in the day you had to do you know a little bit of a, a legwork so to speak uh, to find these things but I do have those gears from stock drive I could also 3d print these gears I also have crown gears um, that I injection molded uh, back when I was doing the uh, rubber uh, the radio control one of the first uh, radio control helicopters the uh, the MIA house flight, you know, I started experiment, experimenting with a lot of contraptions and uh, um, and mechanical setups, you know, in order to uh, to do as many designs. I mean, I, I did hundreds, hundreds of designs of uh, radio control helicopters with all, all sorts of mechanisms, um, you know, that I, I, I wanted to make sure that I didn't, I covered all the bases and there was no room left for for uh, for any um, any option that I, I did not come across. So I did a lot of that uh, stuff, and just I just uh, I would I would just go nuts, you know, just making all kinds of uh, contraptions, and uh, whatever came to my mind, I did it without even considering that it was it wasn't going to work or not. I just did it, and if it worked, great. If it um, if it didn't, then I trashed it and did another one. As you can see, I have I have a lot of these bins here, a lot of these bins, and this I have walls and walls of these types of bins that have. Uh, a lot of the work that I've done here with uh, the, these are some of the uh, early um, um, uh, helicopter frames and designs that I did. Uh, this is mainly frames for the um, radio control helicopters that I was producing back in 1999 when I started uh, selling the uh, MIA Robin, Robin 280, the Bumblebee, the Housefly, uh, you know, and, and, and similar uh, radio control helicopters. And all, the, all this work has stemmed, you know, from the, the more simpler stuff that. Uh, that I embarked in uh, in the early 80s, um, you know the rubber power stuff. So I have I have dozens and dozens of these bins and walls of this stuff right here that you see here, and uh, you know that's how I keep all all my stuff. And so getting back to this, um, like I said, this is the first uh, of the series of videos on uh, designing uh, rubber power helicopters. And this is going to be a coaxial um, um, aimed at, at doing a coaxial helicopter from from a mod modification of this design here, which is already on my CAD system here. It's not going to be a big deal, you know, to to make it into a coaxial. And there's the uh, the actual helicopter here with with a just a surface area there instead of the uh, the belt and pulley system. Here's another one with a belt and pulley system. Um, uh, you know, there um, in another video, I think I explained the differences between you know going with a pulley system versus going with a surface area here, and just to counter uh, to counter uh, act the uh, main rotor torque. You notice here, this is a design. This was designed for to hold the pulley here, but I removed the pulley on this particular one, and so I built it this way right here. Uh, this is extremely lightweight. This is uh, six grams. This is a. Uh, uh, about 20, 20, 20 grams, I believe, this helicopter right here. So these are very lightweight structures, uh, very simplistic, and they are based on the Mosquito full-scale helicopter, you know, the mast and, and, and boom, which is uh, very reminiscent also of some of the early rubber power helicopters that, that other people have done, basically because you want to, when you want to do a helicopter, there's only one logical way to do this if you want to maintain some level of realism here is just to go with a mast where the rubber band is going to it's going to attach obviously from a logical standpoint common sense is that going to be attached to the shaft and either from there you take out the the uh, the pulley the belt and pulley system to a you know to to a very simple boom and to a, an actual you know uh, um, um, a tail rotor um, you need a base you know for the pilot to sit in you obviously you need landing gear some wide landing gear that's going to take the uh, the it's going to be able to land stable so you want to spread that out you know so that's all from a logical common sense point of view uh, and that's how the uh, also the uh, mosquito the full scale of mosquito is done because that's just common sense logic uh, employed in the design of the helicopter so all of these things may, may look similar but there are major differences here especially in the way that I've been designing these with some of these, uh, you know, I, I've been modernizing a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, parts here. The rotors, you know, are my own design. The, the the tip weights are my own design. The frames are my own design. Uh, in this one, I'm using bamboo sticks, and this one is just strictly balsa, just to keep it very very lightweight at that particular scale. Those are foam blades. Those are uh, kind of a mix between uh, balsa and, and paper. 
Uh, and in this one right here, I totally uh, removed the complexity of the belt drive system and just used that. Both of these work very similar. Um, uh, and so this one works, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards this one uh, as, a, as a preference because this is very simplistic. It doesn't have the belt. You don't have to contend with the belt system. So it's very simple. And you can adjust the angle of that, um, uh, that sort of uh, mimicking a rotor surface area. And you can uh, control the um, control the turning of the uh, the helicopter as it as it unwinds it, it you know as it establishes a flight. And both of these have uh, good levels of, of uh, sustainability in the air. Uh, but you know, like helicopters are driven by basically brute force. You know, they have to uh, it, it, you know they go up and then they start coming down right away. You know, it's not like an airplane where it sustains. It's, it's flight path because it's uh, it, once it creates lift, you know, it's just going in that horizontal direction. It's, it's not driven so much by brute power that a helicopter needs to be driven by. So anyway, so what you see here is basically the, the same way my coaxial helicopters are going to, going to look. Realistic uh, looking helicopters, but you know, with these uh, mechanisms, that, uh, once again, these mechanisms are not are not new. This this has already been done in full scale, even you know, with the uh, coaxial helicopters. And it's just you know common sense that the way that they have to be done because there's no other way to do this uh, without at least uh, considering one of these formats here, or you know, independently, you know, dri 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 um, driving each rotor independently. Uh, you know, you can you can drive independently with uh, with indiv individual two two individual motors, or you can do it with one motor, very similar to the way that I'm doing here with one one rubber motor here so anyway this is um part one of this uh, video series once again this is mario with my microflight stay tuned for more cool stuff